What's going on guys? Welcome back to another unboxing, we'll call them mail day, mailbag, whatever you want to call them. We have a bunch of small packages, small little orders, and then one larger order. But yeah, let's dive right in. Let's see uh, let's see what we got here. I don't actually know. It's funny because I used to, whenever I used to get mail, I would open it immediately. I would be like, oh, is the mail here? Let me check the mail. And then I would open it and be real excited about it. And now it's like I've had these for several days. And they're just kind of sitting here in a box, and I'm like, God, I should really make a video so I can open these. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do that now instead. I'm going to save this one for last because it's a very big one. It's just a bunch of bunch of stuff I picked up from TCG Player. Oh, look at this guy. This, I feel like there's going to be a lot of pre-modern stuff in here and a bunch of still Lord of the Rings stuff. This is a Rotlung Reanimator. This guy is classic. This this card was fairly pricey back in the day when it was released um, back in Onslaught. Whenever a Rotlung Reanimator or another cleric is put into your graveyard from play, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token into play. One thing you want to realize with this is that even if it only triggers on itself, it's still 2-2-2s two, 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 for 3 mana, which is pretty good. Um, and that was a lot of its strategy, right? Like, no one cared that it wasn't... It doesn't have to be in a cleric deck. You don't have to have a bunch of clerics in your deck to run this guy. You just have to run this guy. <laughs> and then if he dies, he dies. If he dies, he dies. And um, it was good enough, you know? It was it was pretty good. So, Rolling Reanimator. Solid guy. He's still, like, three bucks, I think. But, yeah, back in the day, this card was, like, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, I think. It was very good. It was one of the uh, premier onslaught cards. I should really have a better setup here where I'm like, oh, we're, this is where the cards go. This is where the envelopes go. Interesting. These two were just envelopes, just regular normal envelopes like this. No, no printed um, shipping order or invoice form order thing and then it was a top loader with a card and a sleeve so those are those are packaged the exact same way interestingly enough um if i ever get multiples of cards like oh hey i bought you know four of this this card you know i have to f i have to like deduce who it's from and be like which seller was this and if like your seller name on tcg player is different from your actual name on the envelope then I have to like go to the sellers I bought that card from and see which state they're in and try to deduce it that way. It's a whole to-do. Undiscovered Paradise, another pre-modern gem. Uh, add one man of any color to mana pool at the beginning of your end step, at, at, the, at the beginning of your next untap phase, return Undiscovered Paradise to its owner's hand. So similar to the end step, kind of. I mean, you're not going to get to use it a second time is really the point. But uh, yeah, Undiscovered Paradise is interesting. It's a card, like, it goes to show you the value of being able to, to have a land that produces all, all colors. And, you know, it, it's, it's a good card. But boy, boy, they really made you work for it back in the day. So yeah, that's another, it's another card that sees a good amount of play in pre-modern. And maybe I'll go over a video, a pre-modern video. I was, I have, a, I had a, a video planned that I was gonna put together because I'd love to talk about it and see what you guys think about pre-modern because it's a really interesting format. And this one, your favorite and mine, or just mine. I actually have no idea how you guys feel, but a shipping shield. Oh, look at that, beautiful. I wonder if this is my fourth Aerolingus. <laughs> Oh, uh, good times. Yeah, that's that's a gem. That's a good one. I like that they've all been extended art. Uh, sometimes I order the extended arts and then they send me regular arts. And it's sad for everybody because then I have to send it back if it's worth something. If it's not worth something, they're usually like, oh, I don't have the regular one. Do you want a partial refund? And I'm like, not really because I'm not going to use a regular one. Can I just send it back to you? And they're like, don't worry about it. You can just keep it. And then I end up with a card, but then I'm like, I'm not gonna use it. So like, I just end up selling it in like a bulk sale that I that I make, I don't know. You get it. Oh, see, this is what I mean. So I'm gonna leave 
that together so I know. I'm trying to keep these in order as well because I have a list. Whenever I order a bunch of cards, I make a list of the cards. So I know when they're shipped, I know when I get them, and then I take them off the list. So if I'm ever missing something and it's like been 15 days, 17 days, whatever, I'll send a message and I'll be like, hey, just want to let you know I haven't gotten this yet. If you have any info, let me know. But this one is another Undiscovered Paradise. Number two, most of these are likely MP. Usually when you use the TCG player cart optimizer feature, um, it, it defaults to MP or, or better, so. And this looks MP, so. And then, this guy. In two of the like past three videos, people have been like, hey, can I send you something? And I've been considering getting a PO box for that reason. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think. Let me know if I should get a PO box. Okay, this is this was this was taped very well. Oh boy. Almost too well. Like if it's, if it, I don't like it when they're taped so well that like I'm risking damaging the cards to get them open. Like if I have to figure out which tape to undo first, just so I can, <laughs> just so I can not damage the cards. That might be a little too well, but let's see what we got here. We have a worthy cause. Sacrifice a creature, gain life, able to sacrifice creature's toughness, and buyback of two. This is a card that's in a combo deck. I actually, off the top of my head, I couldn't even tell you which one. I don't know. <laughs> I picked it up because it was in, um, oh, I think it's I think it's with Tireless Tracker. I think it's like a Tireless Tracker deck where um, you buff the, or Daru Spiritualist. Let me see, I think I have a Daru Spiritualist right here. So Daru Spiritualist says, whenever a cleric you control becomes the target of a spell or ability, it gets plus O plus two until end of turn. So I think basically you just buff this to infinity with, with the combo in the deck, and then you sacrifice it to gain infinite life. This is just another another infinite piece. Um, you'll be like, oh, I'll make Daru Spiritualist a 47, uh, zero, one. Okay. We messed that one up. You get it. You get the point. A one slash two million seventy six, and then I have to kill you from that. Then we have about face. Switch target creature's power and toughness in the limit of turn. Effects that alter power, alter toughness, and vice versa. As you can imagine, also a combo with Daru Spiritualist. So yeah, I saw this deck, uh, and it's similar with Tireless Tracker. Where Tireless Tracker is like, whenever you discard a card, it gets plus O plus three or something. But that's not sustainable. This is sustainable because you just have an infinite combo where um, there's the creatures like Shaman Ilk, and Core where you can just redirect something to this and just target it 4,000 million times, right? So you do that, and then you switch its power and toughness, and then you kill them, or you gain a million life. And so there's these, there's these cards that just combo with it. Alexi's Cloak. So it's a two mana enchantment from uh, Prophecy. You may play Alexi's Cloak anytime you can play an instant. We call that flash nowadays. Enchanted creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. We call that Shroud. And then we have Task Force. Four copies of Task Force. Which says, whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability, it gets plus O plus three until end of turn. So literally, just a redundant, a redundant uh, Dara Spiritualist. But it costs one less. It costs one more, but it's also a one three. It's a 1-3 three for 3 instead of a 1-1 one, one for 2. But they both get plus 0, plus 3 whenever they become a target of Spell or Ability. So, obviously you can see where I was going with these. <laughs> very combo-centric. Very pre-modern. So, and this is a this is a big boy. This is like a, this is like a sandwich. This is the, this is the Big Mac of, of orders here. So we'll see what's in this guy. Also, whenever I cut bubble mailers, I get this weird with this weird fear that I'm like gonna cut the cards. So I'm always like, okay, let me make sure all the cards are like very far from from the top. 
Okay. In no particular order, I imagine. That's kind of how they ship these. Aara, Widow of the Realm. Three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Sacrifice another creature or artifact. Aara, Widow of the Realm, deals X damage to target opponent or battle. And you gain X life where X is the sacrifice permanent's mana value. Sacrifice another creature or artifact. I'm kind of processing these as well when I get these. So, that's interesting. It's a sacrifice outlet. It deals damage to battles, which is kind of cool. And then... We can transform it into a Ara Furnace Queen. Looks like Phyrexia was not kind to her. At the beginning of combat on your turn, return up to one target creature, target artifact or creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. That's actually not bad. I think that the downside on this card is that it costs six mana to transform, but otherwise, like, pretty decent for a sack outlet. It's a, it's a, it's a zero cost sack outlet you just have to tap her and then you get to actually deal damage to things so yeah i picked these up because i saw they were seeing some play everything i pick up is because i either see it in a deck or i, I or i just think it's cool and i want it for my cube patch up three mana return up to three target creature cards with total mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield so this is actually seems pretty good i mean in a deck like I could see this seeing a lot of play in like Proclamation of Rebirth, where you're bringing back like Martyr of Sands, uh, Soul Warden, Essence Warden, not Essence Warden, Soul Attendant. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Soul's Attendant? Maybe that's it? I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about, though. Any of the creatures that, that gain you a life whenever another creature comes into play, like this guy seems really good for that. Plus, or like through, through Wild in the Cattles. Um, yeah, I saw this card in a deck and I was like, that seems cool. I, I understand why it's seen play. Cabal Archon, 2-2 two, two for 3. It's a Cleric, which was relevant in Onslaught and relevant for the pre-modern deck this might go in. Sacrifice a Cleric, target player loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. That's all good and great, but you mostly just want it for the Cleric triggers, and for perhaps another card that we might see in here. About Face, that's probably the fourth copy. This is just the Banishing Light from the Lord of the Rings Commander set. I just thought they were cool, so I picked up 4 of them. I really know no, nothing really super deep about that. They're just they're just cool banishing lights. Same with Boon of the Wishgiver. I'm probably going to replace Boon of the Wishgiver in my regular play stuff with this uh, Lord of the Rings copy. So four copies of Boon of the Wishgiver. You guys can get a better look at that guy. It's just cool. Like this is just cool art. Like I think it's Sauron and all the rings if I'm not mistaken. Same thing with Crypt Incursion. Four copies of Crypt Incursion. Another card that sees a good deal of play in Modern. Exile all creature cards from target player's graveyard. You gain three life for each creature card. Exile this way. It's, it's very strong in like the mill decks, I believe. I'm not sure if it sees play outside of that. A lot of these are just cards I wanted to pick up from Lord of the Rings because I really thought a lot of the reprints were cool. Like Deep Analysis. Target player draws two, then pay three life and draw two again. And then, as you guys know, as I've gone over, I love I love good tokens. So this Elf Warrior, I picked up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight Elf Warrior tokens. So not bad. This Elvish Archdruid is like 20 cents. So I was like, yeah, sure. I'll pick up some Lord of the Rings version Elvish Archdruids. That's just cool. Because especially because Elvish Archdruid doesn't actually have its own interesting frame. It doesn't have like an extended art, it doesn't have a borderless or a secret layer. So this is like the best alternate art Elvish Druid you're gonna get, or Elvish Arch Druid from Lord of the Rings. Elvish Visionary, same thing. Just a classic, just a classic two mana, one one elf that draws you a card. Ooh, interesting. And sometimes you get a situation like this where like they're both obviously legit, but they are very different color tones. The one on the bottom is almost like a teal, and the one on the top is like a hunter green, like a forest green. That's interesting. I'll flip them so you can see that as well. Yeah, like look at the color difference in that. And again, that just comes down to different like printings. Fiend Hunter, same thing. I was tempted to put this in my Innistrad cube because I think this is a cool upgrade. 
that being said, if there's an Innistrad original card, I value that first. Like it's an Innistrad based cube. So the, the basis is an Innistrad. So if there's ever a card that was originally from Innistrad or if there's an original Innistrad printing, that gets priority. So I can't actually put Fiend Slayer in there in good conscience, but it's still cool to have the four of them. Forbidden Alchemy, another classic. Look at the top four cards of your library, put one in the graveyard. Put one in your hand and the rest in the graveyard and then you flash it back, so. Goblin Crater Maker. I believe I picked up five of these because I will actually replace the Goblin Crater Maker in my cube with the Lord of the Rings version. I have no reservations about that. One, two, three, four, five, and one for the cube. Goblin Dark Dwellers, same thing. I don't know if I have a Dark Dwellers in my cube, but it's definitely in the maybe board. And I can just put one in, in the, of the Lord of the Rings version of the maybe board. Again, this card is like 10 cents. So a lot of these are just fun to pick up. Like, I think it's cool to have alternate art versions of Goblin Dark Dwellers that are Lord of the Rings based, and it's not even a dollar for the, for the play set. Three, four, five. Yeah, gutter Snipe, same principle. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, everyone knows what Gutter Snipe does. Just a solid dude. And then one Hornet Queen in this pack. So I'll save that for the next one because the next pack also starts with Hornet Queens. So I always thought it was interesting that Hornet Queen did not really have any alternate arts. It's literally the same Hornet Queen art for every set. So I thought this was super cool. This is a super cool looking Hornet Queen. And I'm actually really excited to replace my existing Hornet Queens with, with this one. So I picked up four of those. And then Languish, same thing. Interestingly, I think the Magic Origins Languish, I think it was an Origins. The original Languish printing, I think it's an Origins, was like, it's like three bucks now, four bucks, something like that. This one was like 10 cents, 40 cents, something like that. Super cheap. So yeah, I mean, Lord of the Rings Languish, sure. I'll pick it up. It's real cheap. Mystic Confluence is a card I absolutely love. This was super cheap as well, like 40 cents, I think. So if you guys are interested in picking up any of these Lord of the Rings alternate arts, I mean, they're at a great price. Mystic Confluence is one of my favorite cards ever. Here's one opt. I picked up a play set. I'm not sure where the, the other three are, but I'm sure we'll find them. Palace Jailer. Again, another play set of Palace Jailers. This is a card that sees play in Legacy. Sees play in a lot of cubes. So, never, never don't need a Palace Jailer. Paradise Druid. This is actually a super cool Paradise Druid art, and I like it a lot. And I'm probably going to replace my regular Paradise Druids with this Paradise Druid because I think it's super cool. And it's like, I think it's the first alternate art Paradise Druid. So, really kind of a good fit. I don't mind updating with um, Paradise Druid stuff. This card's interesting. It's a 9-7 seven for 7, which is humongous. It has Trample. So if you ever need a creature, it's just a big idiot. But you can cycle it for X2 and a red. So when you cycle it, it deals, it destroys X target artifacts. So if I spend 4 mana, I'm getting rid of 1 artifact and drawing a card. If I spend 6 mana, I'm getting rid of 3 artifacts and drawing a card. I just picked this up because I thought it was really versatile. It was very cheap. It was like a quarter, I think. And I was like, if this ever sees play or if I ever want to put it in the cube, like it's a good deal. Like it's a nine, seven for seven. So it's not super expensive for the rate. It's an expensive creature, but you're mostly going to be playing it as artifact removal, I imagine. And, and versatile, scalable artifact removal at that. And you get to draw a card when you do it. <laughs> like it just seemed really good. I was like, that's really versatile. So I picked up four of these. These are in the Commander, the Lord of the Rings Commander set, so. Rex Age, same principle. Four of those guys. Sunset Revelry. This is a pretty new card. I'm not actually sure that what set this came out in. I think it was very, very new. It might have been Dominaria United. I'm not actually sure. I'm not going to look it up, but you guys will know. But anyway, this is a reprint, but it's in cool Lord of the Rings art, and... Yeah, I'll probably just replace my regular boring versions with these. So most of the time, I'm going to prefer extended art, borderless, showcase frames, things like that. Things that make the card kind of stand out, make it look different than a regular magic card. But if the only printing is a regular magic card, like Hornet Queen or Sunset Revelry, I'll definitely take an alternate printing like Lord of the Rings over that because it's just cool. 
Same thing with Thrill of, Poss Thrill of Possibility. <laughs> it's obviously. So, uh, Verge Ranger. This is another reprint. Uh, this is a card I have in my maybe board for my cube. First strike, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. So three through for three. And then as long as your opponent controls more lands than you, you may play lands from the top of your library. So this is kind of like your, it's kind of like we have Courser of Crufix at home, right? <laughs> It's like, mom, can we get Courser of Crufix uh, on the way home? And then your mom's like, oh, we have Courser of Crufix at home. And that's Verge Ranger, you know? But it's still good. Like, I think it's still great for a, a three mana white card, right? That's first strike. It's four wind brisk heights. All these cards are the same principle. It's literally just a bunch of cool versions of cards that don't have really very good alternate arts or borderless cards or whatever. And they're all cheap. They're all super cheap. Woodfall Primus. This is a card I was really excited about because look at this crazy thing. I love Woodfall Primus in the cube and this this tree folk looks phenomenal and it's just, it's going to be a super cool replacement for my vintage cube, so. This is for pre-modern. Um, I wanted four copies of Absorb, but Absorb from, uh, I believe it's, I think, I think it's Invasion. I want to say Invasion. The original Absorb from Invasion is actually like eight bucks. And the Absorb from Dominary Remastered in the retro frame is like 40 cents. So I just got the 40 cent version. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it'll do for now. And if I ever want to pick up the Absorbs uh, that are ex more expensive, I can do that later. But here's two of the Moria Marauders that we, we said we were picking up. One, one more Sulfuric Vortex. This is for pre-modern as well. It's very very abusive in the in the red decks obviously dark supplicant this is what those cabal archons were for sacrifice three clerics search your graveyard hand and or library for a card named scion of darkness and put it into play and then if you search shuffle it one one for one this is a four of an any and in the, in the cleric deck and um just kind of cool so there is kind of like a, a cleric deck going around in pre-modern i'm not sure if it's any good but it's kind of a format where Everyone's still figuring out what's good, and there's different things that are good from week to week. There's two more Lightning Angels. I told you I was playing, picking up the play set. So I think this is three. I think I got one more floating around somewhere. Floating around. <laughs> That's good. Here's a Gainsay. Counter target blue spell for two mana. A classic. Mystical Dispute before Mystical Dispute was a thing. One OG Squee Goblin Nabob. I have the secret layer, but for, for cards like Squee, um, but not even for, like, for cards like Sweet, but for cards that have retro frames, I'm erring on the side of the retro frames for all pre-modern. So I'd like to have decks that are full retro frame. I'm not there yet, but it's a cool, it's a cool little goal to, to, to kind of work towards. See, then we have more of the repeating on the bottom. I'm just going to kind of, see, we have the three, three more dark supplicants. So that brings us to the, pl to the play set. I'm trying to get another, another Cabal Archon. trying to get through the cards that we've already seen lightning angel number four so we did find it now we have all four another gain say and then i think everything else is unique well we have two more worthy cause here bringing us up to the play set so that deck's probably close to complete complete then we have the Scion of Darkness himself. 6-6 six, six for 8 mana. So you really don't want to be casting this guy. <laughs> Trample. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may put target creature card from that player's graveyard into play under your control. And you can also cycle it, which is very cool. Because if you remember, Dark Supplicant's ability does search your graveyard for Scion of Darkness. So you never have to worry about like, oh, it's not in my library anymore. Or it's on my hand. So really cool. Really sweet strategy. Kind of fun. Priest of Gix. Got the playset of this guy. This is interesting. I'll, let's see the casting cost. Three mana for a 2-1, but when he enters the battlefield, you add three black. So basically free. This is from a time and a, <laughs> uh, a set where there were a good amount of free cards where you just play the card and it's it untaps your mana or it adds that much mana to your mana pool and it's just basically a free card. So kind of cool two more shaman in core we saw one of these the other day 
redirect one damage from shaman to any creature you control. So that's a zero ability. And you can just target things like Daru Spiritualist as much as you want. Infinite, infinite times. And that's the trick. Two interdicts. This says counter target artifact, creature, enchantment, or land ability requiring an activation cost. Abilities of that permanent cannot be played again this turn, and then you draw a card for two mana. One and a blue. Look at that, it's an interrupt. Man, what a time. What a time. One more shaman. Sorry, I didn't get those all lumped together, so that makes the play set. Initiates of the Ebon Hand. Look at this Heather Hudson art, it's fantastic. One, one mana cleric for one, it's a one one. You can tap a colorless mana to add a black mana. So it's a filter card. Basically you're filtering colorless mana into black mana. Play this ability is interrupt. If more than three mana is spent this way, then this guy's gotta die. He's, he's just worked too hard. But yeah, this is one of those Fallen Empires cards that has like four different printings. There's like four different arts. And this was obviously the coolest. So I picked this one. This is why parents thought kids were in, in devil worshiping cults back when they played Magic the Gathering in the early mid nineties. And this is one bane of progress because I saw one bane of progress in a lot of legacy lists. So I picked one up, six mana for a two, two. It destroys all artifacts and enchantments. And then you put a counter on it for each permanent destroyed this way. Pretty, pretty wild. Pretty wild if you ask me. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's this, I mean, honestly, this week's, this is today's haul. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys are still enjoying the series. Definitely give this a like, a thumbs up, a share, a subscribe to the channel if you guys are enjoying it. I'm trying to grow it a little bit. Um, it's been a little slow to start, but I do feel like um, I've gotten positive feedback. So hopefully that'll that'll continue. But yeah, definitely, uh, you know, support the content. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate you.